friends, welcome to another little fiddle lesson. I had a couple of folks ask how to build the chord on a violin. And so I think it was related back to this other video that I did a while back, um, figuring out the one, four, and fives on the, the violin, what that is. And since our violin's based on perfect fifths, you can go to like the A string as your one, then you go down a fifth, that's your that's D, which would be your four. And then if you go up a fifth from A, that's your five chord. So you can look at that video. But let's talk about building the chords, but let's go back and just um, let you know how I see it. Not that this is a right way or there's a wrong way, but um, I tend to see numbers um, and finger patterns more than I see the note names. So if you look at our staff here, you'll notice that the spaces are gonna be open and two. So open strings and second finger. And we're just talking basic first position, beginner position. So if you'll notice here, G, open G, two on G, which is a space. Open D, two on D, space. Open A, two on A, open E, two on E. And if you'll notice, the staff is set up with our lowest string, G, is off the staff. D is in the lower part of the staff, A middle staff, and E at the top of the staff. But if you just remember spaces equal opens and twos, you'll be able to find those fingers very easily. And if you'll notice here, I have a little uh, finger chart of what our fingers look like on our fingerboard. And opens are just basically open. And then I'm doing a high two position. So on the G string, that's B natural, D string F sharp, A string C sharp, E string G sharp. So our G string second finger is kind of the oddball. Everybody else in that two position is going to be sharp, but G string second finger B is a B natural. So uh, spaces are opens and twos on our staff. Now, let me grab this other little chart. If you'll notice here, ones and threes on our staff are going to be on the lines. So if you notice, we have a similar situation. One G line, three G line, one three on D, one, three on A, one, three on E. Um, so if you'll notice, it's really easy to figure out what the one is, because one, the bottom line is gonna be one on D, the middle line of the staff is gonna be one on A, and then the top line is gonna be one on E. So if you can find out the first finger, you can find out all the other fingers on that string. So let's say, for instance, if you go to the A string, you know that's the middle line, which is B, um, that's one on A. So you know if you go one below one, that's zero, which is open A. If you go one above one, that's two, and those are spaces. And then if this is a one, you know that the, it alternates, so this has to be a three on A. So again, if you can find your ones on any string, then you can find all the other notes. Here's a little finger chart um, based on the one in normal position. Uh, one on G is A, one on D is E, one on A is B, one on E is F sharp. So the first finger on our E string is kind of the oddball one. And then our threes, C, G, D, and A are just all across the board, just natural. So that is our little chart. So remember, ones and threes are on the line in basic first position. Opens and twos are on the spaces. Now, if I bring this other chart in, this is where you can see how it relates to figuring out the chords. I'm going to adjust this just a little bit so you can see it a little better. All right, so some people kind of think of the lines rather than opens and twos and ones and threes, they think of it as open one, two, three, G string, open one, two, three, D string open one, two, three, A, open one, two, three, E. So that's another way you can kind of look at that. Um, so now I wanted to move over to the actual chord. So if you'll notice here, you have a C chord, which a C chord is spelled C-E-G. So if you build a chord, the ones and threes are gonna stay together or the twos, opens and twos are gonna stay together. So here we have C, E, G on the staff, three, one, three. Then we have another octave up. It would be two, open, two, C, E, G. And then over here, you have it 
um, you can see the, the hand frame. Let me adjust that just a little bit. So normal three, one, normal three, or two open two, which would be two open two, low two position, because you don't have any sharps. Now, in, for the chord G, it's spelled G-B-D, so open two open, or three one three. And here is our little um, finger chart. We have open, high two, open, or three, normal three, one, normal one, and then three on D. So you have two different octaves there. D is D F sharp A. So you have to remember your key signature and make sure those sharps are in there. So D, open D, high two, F sharp, a or three one three so open two open three one three do you see how the pattern's established so the chord is always based on spaces or lines and in turn that's easy for us violinists because they're going to be opens and twos or ones and threes here's a a c sharp e here's one three one or open two open and here's our little uh, finger chart over here one high three because it's a C sharp in our key signature one or high two six um, or oh, I'm sorry a high two C sharp E um, and then here let me move this up just a little bit we have our E and that's E G B so E G sharp B is our E major chord so one three one open two four in this situation. Um, but if you notice the lines stay together and the spaces stay together. So we would have in this case one E high three on the D string one B right here or we'd have open E high two G sharp or, and a four which is B. So I hope you find this helpful and maybe you can take a little screenshot of this. Um, of course uh, there are many more chords than these ones over here, but hopefully that will help get you going so you can understand how to build a chord on the violin. Just remember opens and twos go together and then ones and threes. Now when you get into a little trickier key signature like A flat, then you'd have to incorporate fours and twos rather than opens and twos. Um, but just to get you going in the basic kind of bluegrass keys, this is a great little reminder how to figure it out. If you have any questions, do feel free to reach out and leave me a message, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks so much.